You're listening to Barbell Logic, the podcast where we talk about what it means to experience strength and how you can use simple, hard, and effective strategies in training and nutrition to improve your life. It starts with meeting you where you are right now and finding lasting solutions. Welcome to the show. Hey, welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Matt Reynolds. This is Nikki Sims. We're in our sweet new beanie. So That's warm. Great. So warm. <laughs> <laughs> the sweet Barbell Logic logo leathered patch yeah. on the front, which is pretty cool. I highly recommend them. They are available on the store right now. Um, That's so right. You too can be cool and yet warm. <laughs> Love it. So uh, what are we talking about today? Today we're talking about problem solving equipment, which is really kind of stuff you need beyond the barbell and the bench and a squat rack. Stuff that can make your training a little more complex than it needs to be, or when you're working through an injury, or when you just have $5,000 burning a hole in your pocket and you need to put it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Stuff Because everybody's actually, like that right now in the recession. Yeah, you know, that's the best <laughs> way to spend your money right now. <laughs> that's right. Although it is the holiday season. Happy holidays to you, Miss Sims. Yeah, you too. And uh, so this is also <laughs> great for gift giving guide type stuff for things to put on your Christmas gift or mm -hmm. Christmas list, as well as things to purchase for other people. So yeah. we've talked about equipment before, basic lifting equipment, as well as the things that everybody should have, like shoes, squat shoes and belts, um, you know, things like that. Fractional plates, the kind of things that really everybody needs to have. This is really the next step down the line. Like what kind of equipment do we use? to help address problems or that just makes our life easier or maybe just more enjoyable in the gym. And so we're going to tackle that today. So I think what we'll do is a little back and forth and we can, I almost thought about doing this like a draft, like if we, you know, like the, <laughs> like a, the NFL draft or NBA draft and we'll draft equipment. And so, but That's what we'll brilliant. do is I, I'll throw it to you first. What is a piece okay. of equipment or something that you use in the gym that maybe not everybody knows about or has that makes your life easier that you love? Man, a hundred percent. And 100% without a doubt, monolift attachment. Yeah. I freaking love that. I actually got them as a gift. And I love them because I can bench heavy without ha needing a lift off. And so I don't, if, I don't know if you all know how these work, but they're like these arms that swing out. And when the bar is loaded, the, the weight kind of swings out and you can position yourself right underneath it. So like instead of setting yourself up when you're benching with your eyeballs underneath the bar, you set up with your shoulders underneath the bar, which means you're instantly in your lockout position. So you don't yep. have to deal with that, that reach back or have to do a butt lift or anything. You just get like perfectly set underneath the bar. Um, so it's great when you're benching heavy and you don't have someone to give you a lift off. Um, and, and, and then when you lift it out of the rack, those J hooks, those extended J hooks yes. then swing out of the way. So yeah. they don't stay over your shoulder. They then swing back kind of over your eyes. So you only have yeah. to get it back into the rack. It's very easy to get it out of the rack, which is really cool. They're the best. And honestly, that's like the kind of lifestyle perk of it. <laughs> but also if you have uh, shoulder issues, I've had a lot of situations where people's shoulder issues kind of start to go away once they start using the monolith attachment. Yep. You have yep. them, right? I yeah. do. I also got them from a gift as a gift from a client and love them. Uh, you know, they attach in any major, just any normal kind of rack um, at this point from any of the major uh, equipment manufacturers. Rogue is the one I have. It's the primary one that's on the market. I think there are a few others on the market. I know the other fitness companies are working to come out with those. I do. I think you've got the same one I do with it has kind of the so. longer weighted piece that sticks out horizontally. It's the one part of this I don't like is um, there has to be a counterbalance to be able to rotate that J hook out of the way. And so that that counterbalance piece, I don't know what it's probably 10 inches long, 10, 12 inches long, something like that. And it's so four I, no, I'm just kidding. Huh? <laughs> that's, that's right. So that's what she said. Um, so I, I run, have run into my numerous times. I've run my head into it numerous times with bald head. That's not an easy thing to hide when you're you running. That's, that's right. The newer ones, I believe from rogue actually have more like um, a heavy steel ball at the end or iron. Oh, that's ball way better. At the end, so they don't extend as far. And also yeah. they don't knock your head off or cut your head when you hit them. So I think most totally. of the newer ones are like that, but I agree. I do all my squats with the monolift and a lot of people don't like it oh, as cool. much with the, with the squat. And I do that. I squat inside the rack. I'm set up. I mostly do a, a box squats. Monoliths were originally invented 
um, I think by Louie and Westside or that crew. Yeah. And, uh, you know, somebody will correct me on that. Maybe it was Sordex or somebody who invented it for them, but they were really the ones that made this um, popular. And it was because they were squatting such heavy weights and often with hundreds, if not a thousand pounds of band tension, you can imagine how dangerous it is to walk back a to weight a walk out. with Ooh. lots of band tension. And then all the big yeah. powerlifting meets, the kind of geared powerlifting and non-drug tested powerlifting meets went to these because you had these guys that were on uh, both types of gear, as we would say. And, <laughs> and so they might have 11 or 1200 pounds on the bar. And that's a lot to walk backwards with. Yeah, and we're so not going to talk about a, that kind of gear on this. That's episode. right. No, no, that's not going to be on the list, <laughs> the wish list. You know, unless you're like a 55 or older uh, male, then maybe it should be on your wish list. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. uh, no, they would. Uh, it makes it easier because you can on a squat, you can just stand up. And rather than ever walk back, the J hooks swing out of the way and then you squat. Now, if you've never done that before, it's actually it's there's a little bit of a learning curve. As a matter of fact, yeah. I still stand up and take two kind of little bitty steps back and position my feet and then I squat. But like you said, especially for the bench press, for people who bench press alone and don't have a liftoff person, they are fantastic. So those monolift attachments, and it used to be those attachments didn't exist for many years. You had to buy a monolift, which was typically oh, yeah. between four and $5,000. And it was like the only thing you could do, and it was squatting the thing. Yep. <laughs> and so at Strong Gym, we had two monoliths, you know, and a whole bunch of squat racks, and the monoliths just take up this huge footprint, and all you could do is squat. Now... They've got these great little attachments that go in. They're just, they're they're like a, a big, heavy J-hook. Yeah. Right? Just bigger than a normal J-hook. By the way, yeah. a, a little a, a teaser, which I'll just add to this, is that um, Rogue, as well as some of the other uh, equipment manufacturers, make a, a wall hanger for their dip station, what they call the Matador. And I have purchased multiple versions or, or multiples of those wall hangers and I can hang my, or I can set my monolift attachments hanging up on the wall. So I've, so because they're kind of just, they're just kind of big. And so if you're not using them, it's like, what do you do with them? What do you put them? Just kind of lean them into the corner. Uh, yeah. It's really nice to be able to just hang That's them nice directly them on the, the wall. I've done the same thing. I use that for my, um, for my safeties as well. So kind of, that's kind of another uh, thing that I love to use. Anything else that's on the awesome. monolift? We love them. Um, I've also used them for RDLs, which is kind of nice. Oh, yeah. You don't have that's a good idea. You know, I've never done that, but that's a really smart yeah. idea. I like it. You get out of the way yeah. because a real heavy RDL, which starts from the top, you typically stand up, have to walk backwards, which is, you know, probably it's not okay. optimal. And then, yeah, but, that's right. Yeah. A little easier to walk forward a couple inches and put it back in. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, what's yours? Um, I would go with, I don't know that. <laughs> I would hesitate to say that this is an advanced piece. I'd make jokes that this is you should buy this before you buy a bench and that would be a deadlift jack. And Ooh, I'm talking about a two one. arm, a two arm good deadlift one. jack. That yeah. one arm deadlift. So if I trained at a public <laughs> gym, I would have the one arm deadlift jack. And there is one I think called the Genesis jack, which is made by, in a, in aluminum. It's made from aluminum. And I think Rogue now has the, um, has the, the ability to sell those. And so uh, we actually met the guy in Phoenix that makes it. I don't remember his name. I apologize, but uh, it's really light. And so if you train in a public gym, you can throw that in your gym bag and you can jack up one side of the barbell per side. I love, especially if you have a training partner or if you're a coach and you're training people in person, you should always have the two-sided deadlift jack. So one, because it's true. so much easier to put the weights on and off. But two, you can train your training partner and or client to do one side while you do the other yes. side, right? So <laughs> I don't care. I don't care how much they're paying me per hour. If we're loading a 405 on the bar, I'm gonna I'll do the right side, you do the left side, and it just makes totally. it so much easier. So those uh deadlift jacks now almost always fit inside the rack, which is really nice. So you can deadlift oh, inside good. your rack if you need to. Um to me, I would almost put that in. If you have a home gym, that should be one of the very first things you purchase outside of the absolute basics. And I do joke about it. Like obviously it's not as important as a, a rack or a barbell or bench or weights, but that would be the very first purchase I would make after those initial pieces. Yeah, that's a good Deadlift one. Jack. Yeah, and What's then if you lift in a, if you go in a public gym, like like you were saying, the little guys, what is it, the Genesis or mm -hmm. Dominion has, um, yeah, little dead little wedges, deadlift wedges, yeah, yep. and then the dead wedge is the one that I have, which is just like you roll it under one side, but one hundred percent agree. Yeah. Okay, next one. I've really been craving adjustable dumbbells lately. Mm, I um, have a pair. I love them. Yeah, they're 
like when you get to the point where you really want to do a lot more kind of hypertrophy work and bro work and isolation, I have like I have a membership to a 24 hour fitness, but I sure would love if I didn't have to go there to use the dumbbells and could just have a set of adjustable dumbbells instead because doesn't take up a lot of floor space. It's way cheaper than getting a full set of dumbbells and you can right. really load in like a huge range. Like the ones I've used are the micro plates dumbbells. Yep. You just have like the empty tiny little barbell looking things. And then you can even get the micro um micro gains. Did I say micro gains or micro weights before? Anyway, yeah, micro gains. Micro, micro gains. Yep. yep. Yeah. They have like tens, fives, two and a halfs, and then the little ones. So it's like infinitely loadable. And yep. I like the length of their adjustable doubles too. I think the rogue ones can kind of be like a little bit kind of long. So you like bump into yourself with their dumbbells. Yep. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend yeah, those. Yeah, I, I like that idea. First off, let's be clear. It is not <laughs> space or price efficient to have a, a an old school set of hex dumbbells in your home they're crazy expensive we're talking about six seven thousand dollars right they cost a ton you know tons of weight per pound and then every time you know if you look at the price of like the 75 pound set of 75 pound dumbbells and then a set of if you skip the 80s and go right to 85s and then 95s or if you go 70 80 90 100 i mean you'll spend 1500 dollars on those last four and so they're very very expensive to get those certainly you know big global gyms have those we had them at strong um, for a long time, I was using adjustable dumbbells. I will say that now that micro gains have come out with their steel smaller plates, like the 10 pound plates that are steel. Yep. And are, I'll get this wrong, but I think they're like three eighths of an inch wide. I mean, they're really narrow. You can load up very yeah. heavy adjustable dumb, good dumbbell handles with a good collar. And, yeah. uh, and you can make nice heavy dumbbells adjustable, nice and easy. I finally pulled the trigger a couple years ago on a set of power blocks. I got the power, Bo- power block pros. They go up to 90 pounds, which is good enough for pretty much all the stuff I'm going to press. Theoretically, I need a little heavier for like crock rows or something. But um, it also is just doesn't take up any space. It's I can go from 10 pounds to 90 pounds very quickly. Um, and Titan has just started making a dumbbell um, spotter attachment. So similar to the way that a, a monolift would attach. I actually have a couple clients that got it. Um, Wolf has a Wolf, Michael Wolf, you guys know him. He has a a set from a company that doesn't make them anymore. And they were like brutally expensive. I mean, he spent like 400 bucks on them. And I think the ones from Titan are like 159 or something. And so for those of you that want to do heavy dumbbell presses, like bench presses, something that requires you to get the dumbbell either over your chest or over your shoulders, it's very difficult if they're really heavy. You got to really swing them into place. I was just trying place. to do that this morning, actually. Yeah. yeah, yeah I, like, so I had to limit the weight just because I was like sketched out about trying to pick it That's up. That's right. That's right. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so you can, now they Titan has some, and I'm sure, again, as soon as one company comes out with one of these, the other companies will start to learn how to compete. They'll buy, You know they buy them. They sketch them up. They're like, how can we improve on this design? Uh, this is what I love about competition and capitalism. Love it. <laughs> and so they'll get better. And so, but I do have a couple clients that have those and they're actually really nice. So if you want a dumbbell out. bench or press heavy, those uh, spotters from Titan are pretty good. And again, I should say, we don't have a relationship really with any client. So I think Rep Fitness has uh, done some a little bit of sponsorship for us um, and obviously micro gains and Dominion. But as we talk through all of these, we don't have any active, um, any sort of relationships. We're not getting kickbacks or any of this sort of stuff. You know, I've never had a relationship with Rogue and almost everything in my gym is Rogue uh, just because I've, I it's high quality gear and I've used it for years. There are certainly some of the other companies like Rep and Fringe and and even Titan have done a really good job the last few years. I'm very happy. I've got pieces of equipment from all of those companies, but um, we're just telling you what we use and what we love. So, um, OK, so you did adjustable dumbbells. I talked about the 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 spotters for those. Uh, you want me to do another one? Yeah, do another one. Okay, so I see some bars on our list. My favorite bar, you know, do you, you know what my favorite bar is? The, it's not a trick question. The deadlift bar is oh, okay. Well, the okay, let's the deadlift bar is amazing. That is <laughs> yeah. true. I was going to go with axle. A deadlift oh, bar. Yes, yes, yes. The deadlift okay. bar I might yeah. buy first before the axle. So a deadlift yeah. bar, if you deadlift heavy, and again, there's a bunch of good deadlift bars out there. My favorite ones are the Ohio deadlift bar from Rogue or the Texas deadlift bar. Um, who I don't know who makes that anymore. I don't know if it's actually yeah. um, mm-hmm. Buddy Cap or it used to. It used to be Ricky Del Crane in Oklahoma, um, but you can still get your hands <laughs> on both those Texas deadlift bar. They're twenty-seven millimeters, uh, so they're smaller. Another you know, millimeter smaller around, easier to hold on to. Big neural, 
And so I really do like that that deadlift bar. It takes a little time to get used to. It's a little bit longer. It's got a little more whip. Reduces the range of motion just a little bit. I wouldn't train with it all the time. Certainly wouldn't do all my deadlifts with it. I wouldn't do things like RDLs do, like, or rack rows. pulls or things. Yeah. Like, yeah <laughs> rows, things like that with it. Um, but yeah, just uh, the, uh, the other one that I love is the axle. I love an axle for overhead pressing and bench pressing. It's a cheap bar. It's really like a nice piece of Schedule 80 pipe. It's probably mm -hmm. the cheapest bar you can buy. And it just displaces the force across your hand and wrist and forearms a little better. And so if you tend to get a lot of tendonitis from the elbow to the hand or you know, elbow through the wrist and in the hand, I really like an axle. So I use those a lot as well. So those are my two favorite bars that I use the most, although I do have several others. How about you? Um, not a barbell, but an adjustable bench, I think is mm. super handy. Um, you can use that for incline presses or benches. I don't really know what the difference is between an incline bench press and an incline press, if there is one. Probably not. It's probably the same. <laughs> probably um, yeah. and really great for, again, arm work, like hypertrophy stuff. <laughs> yep. Um, and rep has a bench now that when it's flat it's totally flat like there's no yep. gap i think that's actually no what gap. it's called the no, it's the gap. no gap bench yep. yeah yep. that's really cool so if you're if you don't have your bench yet i think looking into that rep one that's the no gap incline bench or adjustable bench would be pretty rad agree i uh i'm jealous i would like to have one of those i have never had one and would like to have one it's also pretty nice for like chest supported rows you Ooh, can put exactly. chest down for mm -hmm. rear delt work things like that um yeah and you can play with the angles so for my clients that i'm trying to use an incline bench as a supplemental lift to drive their bench up. I'll, I'll go with a pretty low incline, so like a 20 to 30 degree incline. Whereas if a, if it's a strongman competitor or somebody who's trying to drive up their overhead press, then I would go with a higher angle, something between 45 and 60. And so the nice thing about those adjustable benches is you have all of those options. And so adjustable benches are actually really, really nice. I, I would agree. Um, Let's move to, I love having a dip station. It's another thing. It's just an attachment. Mm -hmm. One of the great things that's occurred over the years is that we have these incredible attachments for all of these awesome racks that the equipment companies made make. And so what, again, what used to be a big footprint piece that would take, you know, three feet by three feet to a floor space. Now it's just a simple thing that just attaches to a vertical on your rack and you can do dips, which I really love. Um, certainly there's not a lot of other things you can do, but it doesn't take up a lot of space. And again, you can hang it directly on the wall. And so those, uh, from Rogue, it's called the Matador, but any, I think just about all of the equipment manufacturers make those that fit their specific rack. So big fan of the dip station. Hmm. Okay. What about, um, does a slingshot count? Yeah. This? I wrote that down. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. I like that a lot. I've been using that a whole bunch <laughs> with, yeah. with jujitsu shoulders. But that one, I think is a great way to overload your bench press. And it's not like some overload bench press variations are kind of high maintenance with the equipment, like setting up a pin bench or setting up yep. chains, um, setting up bands. But with a slingshot, it's like really easy to just be able to get right into it. I highly recommend you have a monolift attachment though, when you start doing slingshot or a really yeah, good Yeah, that's a really spotter. great. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I thought about that when we, made the notes for the show. So I love slingshots as well. I don't love a slingshot without a spotter. Yeah. Um, it can be done. Now, there are really two ways to use a slingshot. One is, as you mentioned, for BJJ sh shoulders, for rehabbing shoulders, where you're not really handling weight above what your bench press would handle, would, would be able to do, but it just protects the shoulders and the bottom of the lift. A slingshot is really a modified, what is a modified bench shirt, like what a bench shirt was for powerlifters. It's much, much less intense. You can put it on and within the first session or two, you can get used to it. But there is a groove with it. And the more stiff ones that you get and the smaller size that you get, it's not that difficult to accidentally throw it on, to throw the weight on your throat. And yeah. So and it happens really fast. <laughs> it happens really fast. That's right. Yeah. So you definitely, if you're benching alone, I would suggest to have the monolift and attachments and would always suggest to have the J-hook set up, you know, higher than your face, higher than your throat, um, but below the top of your chest. That works well. The other one that I like that's similar to that um, is a bench block. And so, again, I love these things that, that you know, Westside used to do what was what we called board presses. I still have them in my stuff in my closet. I have a two board and a three board and a four board, and they're literally like two four by board. sixes. 
screwed together, like four two by sixes screwed together is a four board press, right? And it's a, a very short range of motion, three boards a little longer, two boards a little longer. And now there's these bench blocks and it's just a little like compressed, like very <laughs> like high yoga density block. foam. That's right. It's like a yoga block. And the nice thing about that is, as well as a slingshot, is you can put it in your gym bag if you're traveling, if you tr if you train at a different gym, and you can you can travel with it. And that bench block has a place where you just you lock it onto the you just clip it onto click it onto the the barbell. And how you turn the block gives you kind of a one board, two board, three board sort of version, so you can reduce or increase the range of motion on those as well. I do like the bench block a little bit better without a spotter. I feel a little safer with that. There's less chance of misgrooving it and throwing it on my face um, than a slingshot. Yeah. Again, if you're using a slingshot for rehab as opposed to overloading your bench, when I use a slingshot for overloading my bench, and I've got several clients using it right now, they go ahead and bench heavy like they normally would. And then at the, t at the end of that bench press main movement, they then throw a little more weight on and they do a couple more sets of maybe triples, two sets of three, three sets of three, of an overloaded bench more than they could actually bench press. So maybe you work up to 275 on bench press and then you put 300 on, put the slingshot on and you knock out another couple sets. Or maybe you throw yep. the slingshot on, do one set at 275 just to get the feel again of where you left the bench press off and then go up a little bit more and it works really well to overload the bench. So so that's that. our overload bench pressing. It's good. One. I used to like use a rubber band because I would need to do like blocks or board stuff on my own. So I'd like put a rubber band around my chest and yeah, then like stick the blocks it. in it. Yep. Or I would just like put it underneath my shirt. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work Bench nearly as well. Way better now. <laughs> yeah, we've done that for sure. So uh, what's your next the one? Next, the next thing I would love to have um, is a pulley system. Yes. Um, again, that's something that I go to the Globo gym and use, but I would really love to have that in my own house. Again, yeah. we toured the Rep Fitness kind of um HQ. one of their headquarters recently yeah. and they had this new rack that it was like this beautiful squat rack and within it was a a um a stacked pulley system Lat that was down. yeah it was incredible freaking awesome High it cables, had like cables is that the yeah. Aries? is that what it's called yeah it's Aries. oh my god yeah. i'm like obsessed but yeah you can have like tons of cross work you can do like rows in any direction pull downs lots of ways to attach it and you can just hammer so much accessory at work with that um yep. and there are different ways you can do it like the what's that kind of um oh spud spud yeah, is another kind of strap. yep for the more introduction pulley yeah. system you can <laughs> yep. even just go Rat to the poor man. yeah that's <laughs> yeah, right exactly. get a pulley system <laughs> yeah that's right and set that up but i think there's just a ton of potential with um a pulley system yeah there, there are a ton of exercises you can do i've got a i had a I think a New York barbells one, which was a very low quality one for years after I sold strong. And then I finally upgraded to the Titan, the nice Titan stack one, which I had to wait. I think I ordered like literally as COVID was hitting. And then I got it ah, 13 yeah. months later. If you remember this, <laughs> it's was, it was a little bit of a lag time. <laughs> We're like, it's on a boat somewhere. We don't know where. Uh, and so a good lat pull down, um, you know, you can, a lat pull down is something that you can often find at a Palladian sports type place that a high school or a college have gotten rid of and they're nice and they're heavy duty and they're chunky and you can put them in your garage or put them in your basement. And the one thing about a lat pull down machine, if you're not careful is if it's not tall enough, you don't get, I want to call them um, for those of you watching the video. If I lift my arms straight over my head, I want to call that extension. It's actually shoulder flexion, but I, I, I want to get full extension or full range of motion. And for those of you that are tall, if I can't get full, it, it would be like doing chin ups, but stopping a few inches short of the bottom, yeah. you know, which we talk about a lot to our clients. I'm like, yeah, you got to go all the way down. So you do want to let pull down to get full range of motion. Certainly now, most of these equipment companies have these amazing attachable lat pull down high, and they're all usually have high pulley and low pulley, the high cable, low cable systems. Um, they're very expensive. If the, again, this is one of those, like you literally, if you have $5,000 sitting around and you want, and you want to just have the most ridiculous rack ever with this got a, big, you know, double stack attachment to it, high, high pull, low pull. It's really nice, but you can do a lot pull downs on those, right? You can do any kind of tricep push down work. You yeah. get the low cable, you can do curls, you can do seated rows, you can do, so there's, there's tons of different exercises you can do with a pulley yeah. system. Um, yeah, I've been doing a lot of glute work lately and like the kickbacks on the cable machine are yeah. awesome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. What's the one, um, what did Westside call those? Dang it. Pull throughs. 
they call them pull throughs, which kind of look like it's where you attach oh, like the a... low cable to the rope. And then mm-hmm. you kind of look like you're doing the dirty. I in, have yet to do that in, in a public think, space. Yeah, because anywhere I do it would be in a public space. And I'm just What's not the difference ready. between that and a hip thrust? <laughs> I, ha- no... I did those this morning, actually. And in a public um, gym? Yeah. I think okay. you just have to be really careful about eye contact. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so the, I also started doing the ins and the outs, the oh, yeses nice. and the nos. Although the, I just the do the, the I just the do the yeses. <laughs> of course you also, do. Also, careful the yeses. with eye contact on that one. <laughs> <laughs> on the yeses, you can make all the eye contact you want on the nose. As a matter of fact, specifically do the nose and make eye contact, <laughs> just to make sure that you get your point across. That's a uh, that's very important. Um, okay, um, we've talked about bands and chains before. I love bands and chains. Uh, I think and we, we did a podcast just a few weeks ago about this. I think chains carry over probably a little bit better to raw lifting, but chains were a giant, heavy pain in the ass. And if you have a home gym, they work fine. There's chain holders now that you can get all sorts of different chain holders that either attach to the wall or attach to your rack. They're great. I've got them. You could buy the, you can buy chains from different places. If you live near the coast, you can buy chains pretty cheap. If you live in Missouri, you can't buy chain, chains cheap because big, heavy chains are used for boats and anchors. And we don't have any of those here because there's no water. And so so um, I ordered some from Titan uh, a couple years ago. They yeah. were great. I've got the chain holders and the loaders are fine. The thing about the bands are you can overload or work the strength curve on any of the lifts on the squat, the deadlift, the bench, theoretically the press, but it's a long way to stretch a, stretch a band. The nice thing about the bands is you can throw them in your bag. So if you don't train at home, you can throw them in your bag and you can take them and you can do them at a public gym, any gym with a barbell and weights. And so that is also a really nice uh, addition to your training. Again, I would say if you train at home, um, I think bands and chains are both great. If you train at, a, at another gym, probably just bands. It would get really weird. I actually did this once. I can't remember if I've, I'm sure I've told this on the podcast as I get old and forget all the stories that I've told. But I used to put okay, my, my chains in a, <laughs> in a milk crate, you know, like an old like oh, a plastic yeah. milk crate. And I would wheel them in on a dolly to <laughs> St. John's Medical Fitness Center, which is a hospital gym. And we'd load Amazing. up chains and, and do them in the gym. <laughs> this is in maybe uh, 2001. So it's, it's a long time ago. So and rad. That was the gym that it asked us to leave eventually. <laughs> they were like, we're going to need They were super what nice. They're did- we like, hey, you guys are great, but we're just not set up for what you're doing. And they were right. Back at that time, what did you use for smelling salts? There are so many things you can even just get on Amazon now. But yeah, what did so you use back there, then? There, there were smelling salts. There were not, I couldn't, you could, some guys had ammonia caps. I don't know where you'd get them because I wasn't really an Amazon. Uh, but you get smelling salts from Elite FTS. And so oh, okay. I have this on the list. I love ammonia. I love it. I use it almost <laughs> every workout. I, I do. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, my God. And I know I've told this story before, too, where I almost got fired as a teacher once for using them in the high school weight room. And then all the high school guys, and it was me and, and Coach Gold, and we were deadlifting like 700 pounds. And oh, he, would, he could deadlift 765. And we would take this oh big hit gosh. of ammonia. And like, you know, it's just about knocks you unconscious. And then deadlift. <laughs> and then later, the the high school boys all told their parents. Their parents called the school board. And the school oh, board, man. they called us in. And they were like, you can't be sniffing steroids in the in the high school gym. Like, <laughs> steroids. Sniffing steroids. <laughs> we're like, it's just ammonia. And they were like, ammonia? Why would you sniff that? And I was like, well, it's a bronchiodilator. And I would start to, like, don't do it. I was like, okay, I got it. <laughs> so, That's awesome. uh, no, I do. I love ammonia. Um, there's a lot of good companies out there that that you can buy ammonia smelling salts for really, for very cheap, relatively cheap. Yeah. Um, they go, You, I would say, you don't really ever want to leave the cap off. First off, right. if you've never used an ammonia salt, like in an actual in a little jar, you want to go real slow in the beginning. Be gentle. Be gentle. <laughs> so barely crack that seal, hold it at about 14 inches from your face and waft it. Yeah. And, event, do and then not just slowly do it if you get have closer. a cold or anything wrong with no, your sinuses. No, do do it if you have a cold. That's what you want. That's, how, that's what opens up the sinuses. No, but if you have <laughs> like <laughs> sore, tender sinuses and you, yeah, oh, true. it's like death. Oh, man. Um, <laughs> you know, yeah, it's uh, it's like a slap in the face of an adrenaline rush as well yeah. as a as a bronchiodilator lets you get a little more oxygen in. It's awesome. I really like the ammonia capsules, which are Same. much less intense, are typically sold to the medical community. You used to be able to buy 100 capsules for 20 bucks on Amazon. That's one of those things that went away with COVID. You can't find them on I Amazon recently. anymore. Man, yeah, it's really curious. difficult. No. And you just break these little capsules. They're they're actually I think they're just a little glass ampule. 
that's wrapped in like cotton and and sort of a I don't know like a canvas. And so you break it, but you never feel the the glass break, and then it just oh yeah. It, and then the so you break the glass, and the glass is surrounded by a little bit of cotton. The cotton absorbs the ammonia, and you can immediately smell the ammonia. So then you just toss mm-hmm. a little this little capsule away. They're I don't know they're what about an inch long, maybe in, yeah. in three eighths of an inch in diameter. That's and a lot so, of drama. Uh, I love those because like, they're not real intense. They won't kill you. The room. Yeah. yeah, they won't knock you over. <laughs> Whereas the actual, some of these, you know, I, a lot of these, uh, I love like the brands. Rhino, nose, like nose rhino bleach, force, nose yeah. cocaine. <laughs> You're like, like nose torque. I think that's what we would call nose it. Nose torque yeah. is actually what the original one was. It came yeah. in this hideous white bottle, uh, and somebody had, like printed it on their home printer in. It was just a <laughs> white label with black writing. It just said nose torque, and it was just <laughs> that's exactly what it was. But they're actually like legit ammonia salt. So ammonia, it's a hundred percent ammonia, you know, it, and we used to do this too in our poor college days. You could go buy a commercial ammonia product, like commercial cleaning product. And if you look on the back of that, I think like a home, I'm going to get this wrong, but if you go to Walmart or something and you buy ammonia, it's like 15% ammonia, like what you clean your floors with. A commercial ammonia is like 30%. It's like double the ammonia. This is a hundred percent ammonia, ammonia salts. Yowza. Whereas the capsules are, I don't know, fifty percent or something like that. So, so you definitely kind of got to step up to it. It takes a little bit of time, uh, but it's fun to do before your big lifts. I will tell you this: I have noticed. I don't have any empirical or like you know data on this, but uh, my experience is the more you use it, the more it sort of. Again, I'm going to use a bro science word. It feels like it kind of burns your nervous system out a little bit, whatever mm, that is. Okay. So you don't want it, you know, if you had three heavy lifts to do or like a powerlifting meet when you lift nine times, I would not hit ammonia nine times at, Oof, a, at a powerlifting no, meet. Just save that for like your I would, last I would do like squat, my last, last squat, deadlift. my last yeah. bench press and yeah. my second and third deadlift. So like maybe four yeah. times is what I, would, what I would do. So, yeah. okay, so there you go. So that is, please, parents, don't write us. And so we're not telling your kids to go steroids. It's not breaking bad or anything else. And it is should be again. This is advanced sort of lifting. Uh, What else? (laughs) Um, I'm man. You and I both have this piece of equipment. I have mine. Thanks to you is the Titan leg curl and leg extension. Yeah. Yeah. That I love um, it. You actually sent that my way when I was having a lot of back issues and couldn't do much with a barbell. And that was rad. Um, Yep. Because it, you can switch it between a leg extension and a leg curl, and That's I found right. like the the floor doesn't take that much room, doesn't nope. take up that much room in your gym, and it's plate loaded. Um, I think it's like six hundred bucks or something. Um, Jeez, that's way more than it used to be. But yeah, yeah, I think it's. I think it was three ninety nine back up. when I got it. Yeah, but, <laughs> but I do love that because that kind of accessory work is really nice, and you don't really like. It's a nice way to isolate that, yeah, without getting beat up, without doing another barbell right. lift, without doing lunges, um, and you can really go heavy. I That's like right. that one a lot. Yeah. For me, and I, I don't know how well this carries over all our listeners, so I won't spend much time on it. Is I've, I've said this before, my old beat up man hips, I can't do high volume squats. I still love to squat, I still squat heavy, but I just can't do volume. So I have to get my volume from accessory work that doesn't beat me up. So leg extensions, leg curls, glute ham rays, which I love glute ham rays, but it's a huge footprint. Again, more and more companies are coming out with some of these kind of Nordic glute ham raises that go on the floor that slide up and kind of semi hang on the wall. Those are going to get better and better and more sort of, you know, storable Um, and a reverse hyper. Those four things for me are the movements that I use to get volume in for lower body. So I still squat and deadlift, not with lots of volume. I can do a little more volume on deadlift than I can on squats. And then I go out to the garage and I do that stuff. And so that works pretty well for me. So yeah. Um, we would be remiss if we did not mention what we are most famous for here at Barbell Logic, which is wrist straps and wrist wraps, yes. <laughs> which I believe we have the number one videos on. Matt in, has on gone YouTube viral talking right. about wrist wraps. Wrist, <laughs> wrist straps. I forget which one it is. Yeah, it's wrist straps. straps. We have over a million. Yeah. And I think wrist yeah. wraps, I don't know, there's 400,000 or something views. Um, I, I saw we have a question that's coming in. We're going to do a Q&A episode here coming up. And somebody said, um, the question was, can I wear wrist wraps on the deadlift? And I wanted to go, oh, my God. I feel Why like no? what you meant to say was, can I wear wrist straps on the deadlift, right? And so, um, so yes, straps are what straps your hands to the bar. Wraps are what wraps your wrist nice and tight, kind of puts your wrist in a, in a cast for heavy pressing or bench pressing. And so those are things that really everybody should have pretty quick. As much as we talk about yeah. all these other things, that's up there with like the deadlift jack and like after you buy shoes and, and like, a belt, wrist and wraps chalk, and like, wrist straps. Yeah. Say what? 
I was going to say chalk, but that seems like a no brainer. Chalk for sure. Yeah, chalk should be <laughs> yeah. a, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a self evident yeah, truth of things that we should own is, is chalk. <laughs> uh, but yeah, wrist straps, when you start getting heavy um, on the presses and the bench presses, putting those on, again, it's more it's similar to the belt. It's more for that feedback that says, like, keep your wrist straight. Don't let your wrist mm-hmm. bend on the heavy presses. Yeah, that's super, and super important. That, yep. And for straps, for high rep deadlift type movements, rack pulls, um, and, you know, even like high rep croc rows or RDLs, barbell rows, yeah. RDLs, things like that, or even deadlifts five reps and over. I'm like, straps are totally fine. Always fine. Oh, yeah. Or right? like banded deadlifts. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, something yeah. like that. So straps are fine. That I like the leather ones a lot. Do you have a preference between leather and cloth? I typically would say leather first. And the Dominion ones I love. And I have a set of those. I the love same. them. Uh, the nice thing about those Dominions, I don't know what they do, the way they tan them or something. That, that when you first get them, they're not as stiff as other leather straps. And they don't like scratch up your hand real bad. They're relatively right. soft. Um, but they get softer and softer as you use them and get better as you use them. So they get that kind of patina on them and they get kind of soft and they get worn almost exactly to your wrist shape. I still have a set from Elite FTS that I think is the ones I use in that video. There's some yeah. sort of weird combination of like canvas and rubber. It's like They're rubber like layers. Yeah, yeah. It's like rubber stitching inside canvas. Now they're way too long. And again, you can watch the video. I just want to wrap them around the bar one time. I don't want to wrap them around the bar eight times. There's no reason to do that. And so, uh, but wrist wraps and wrist straps are both things that are very valuable for almost all clients to have. Once once you're anywhere near the end of novice training, you should probably yep. have that certainly mm-hmm. going into Agreed. intermediate. Yeah. What else you got? Mm, kind of scraping the bottom of the barrel now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Uh, um, let's talk, can we talk, let's talk clothes a little bit. Can we talk clothes? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, first off, I know you've always made a big point that especially as over the last, God, an almost decade that we're now working together, <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that you have learned to not wear the same thing that you work in as what you train in. And so you have specific training clothes that are your training like clothes are not your work, work clothes. yoga pants. And then That's I have right. my workout. Yoga pants. <laughs> That's right. So are there, so I guess my question for you first off is for your workout, for your training clothes, how much of those are about, I think I know the answer to this, but I don't want to, I'll, I'll let you speak to it. How much of those are about the way it makes you feel versus the way they help you perform? Mm. Yeah, that's more about like feel, keeping things in the right place, not being distracting. I do have a couple pairs of pants that are so tight that they probably are a little bit assistive, but they're so uncomfortable, I don't wear them. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But yeah, those are more like making sure you know, when you are bending over and standing back up again, like your pants aren't falling down the whole time. Or but like there's also for you, stand, there's but... a fashion sense to this or style sense, of one of the two. Where like, yeah, you, you want to like, look good in your workout good. clothes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and that's really yeah. what I mean. Like how it makes you feel yeah. not... Where for me, I think most of my choices... Well, yes, also I'm, you know, I'm not wearing, you know, 13-inch inseam board shorts when I train because I don't own goodness. any of those. I don't own any of those. Yeah. But I do, do have them, I do wear a lot of I, I do wear a lot of supportive gear that probably help with performance. I don't literally mean it helps add weight to the bar. As a matter of fact, we've got a video coming up probably by the time this podcast comes out. I, I did a, a um, review on all the knee sleeves. And oh, so cool. I love and it, by the way, knee sleeves, I would say, is one of those things you should have. That's that that would be before this. Those are good ones, too. Before yeah. this podcast, like you should have that before you get to more of these advanced things. I love the Ray-Ban knee sleeves. Don't have a relationship with them. The, you know, the blue one, seven millimeter. I've used them for years. I'm on my second pair in like 25 years of training. Like the first one lasted like 20 years. That's amazing. And so I love those. I don't think they add any weight to the bar. I don't think I squat anymore with those. I also wear Ray-Ban compression shorts. Some, And they're pretty thin. I think they're like three millimeter. So what I do is I put on Under Armour uh, compression, I don't know what you call them. They're just like, they're kind of like boxer briefs, but they're long. Okay. What would you call those? Compression know, briefs? Something. I don't know. But yeah. <laughs> same kind of material as normal like boxer briefs. But they're they're lo- slightly longer than, they don't go down to my knee, but they go kind of to the bottom of my quad. And okay. then I pull the kind Ray-Ban like shorts on over those. And the reason I put those on is because the Ray-Ban Ooh. shorts, because they're neoprene, they're kind of sticky. And so I want them to yeah, slide totally. up those, that kind of the uh, nylon uh, undershorts. And then mm-hmm. I put on my normal shorts, like my training shorts, Oliver's or Lulu or whatever. 
And uh, and so I, I wear those. I love a uh, A7 shirt to squat or bench in uh, with that, you know, that rubber back shirt, because I think it helps hold the bar in place or, or stick you to the to the bench. And so I love all of those things. Um, I actually even we never talked about this. I'm a big respecter of the socks, Nikki. I don't have oh, we ever really? talked about this. Yeah. People no. in your state, they don't respect the stock. They'll just pull two socks. All my they friends from California that. <laughs> that live in Missouri will pull two socks out of the drawer, unmatching, and put them on. And I'm like, you were okay. an un all of my socks have an R and an L sewn into mm. the sock. I don't we're not listen. No, no. I want a right sock and a left sock. We and wear flip flops here all the time. <laughs> that's true. I don't even own a pair of sandals. I don't believe in sandals. I don't even believe they exist. And so so I even, I really do actually think about the socks that I wear uh, for training. Yeah. Cool. And like, if I'm going to deadlift barefooted, what socks am I going to wear? Is it? Wow. <laughs> I know. I like I, that. I know. Okay. So New level Madonna, of respect. I guess. <laughs> what are you going to do? What about, I think we need to mention like, this is on our list of prep, like the safety squat bar and then like a Cadillac bar. What yeah, do you, where those... do you think that fits in the safety squat bar? Uh, any, I, I really like a safety squat bar. Um, I really like any of those bar is the Cadillac bar. Is that the Kabuki bar? That's like, what is the Cadillac bar? Yeah. It's like a football bar, but oh, with the, um, with the angle, it's curved. Oh, 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 with so, the yeah, rounded you can get curve. more range of motion. That's right. That's right. I've actually never cool. benched on one of those. They look really cool. I've, I've got a football awesome. bar. Yeah. I love a football bar for people who have shoulder Same. pain. Rachel mostly presses and benches with a football bar at this point. Um, again, I think about this a lot. You know, I've said this a lot to clients and you have to make a modification to one of the main lifts but you get the same range of motion and basically the same weight, right? So for example, like me box squatting, I can't really full squat without the box. My hips can't handle it. How much less effective is a 400 or 405 for a triple or 405 for five box squat as opposed to a 405 squat without the box? Like, I don't think it's that well, big of a difference. Well, I think if you did a 405 squat without the box, you wouldn't be able to squat again for like... I don't right. know, it would hurt my hips. That's so, true. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's true. Totally squat with a box to not perfect depth. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for Rachel, you know, she's benching right now, not super heavy. She's benching like 165 for sets of five, but she's doing it on the football bar Ooh, instead heavy. of a instead of a straight bar. So the question is, is like, is there I don't know if it's harder or not. I just I just I don't think, think it it's is. like that much less effective. <laughs> and so if and so I would argue the same thing with something like a safety squat bar. If you've got really bad shoulders, you're an older guy. You've got a labrum tear that you probably need to get repaired, but you're just like, ah, just my shoulders are all beat up. And you squat with a safety squat bar instead of a regular bar, which sort of elongates your torso. How much less effective is that than a than a straight bar squat? I'd argue like not very much. I mean, if yeah. anything, we're talking about like five percent. And so yeah, to be able really to do not worth it, getting in a tizzy over. That's that's exactly right. I think we get in tizzies over this stuff. So yeah, some of these bars, there there are. In the same way that we can use the slingshot to protect the shoulders when the shoulders are injured, or we can use the slingshot to overload the bench press, we can use these bars the same way. We can use these bars in a way that allow us to get through a full range of motion on the movement because we're old, beat up, have injuries, whatever, and they allow us to do it pain-free, which I think is really important. And there's yeah. also times that that big-time competitive lifters, like, you know, west side type or conjugate type lifters, are going to use those to really overload the system. They're going to they're going to do a safety squat bar crazy heavy, or a cambered bar crazy heavy, or kabuki bar crazy heavy, and, and I think that's perfectly fine too. And so you just have to know the place, right? I was thinking about this with a yeah. trap bar the other day because trap bars are all the rage right now. These kind of walk through oh, yeah. trap bars, and I have over time I've just sort of like hated the trap bar, and, and so. Because it is a lot easier and it's a shorter range of motion. My, my bigger deal is the shorter range of motion, right? But also most of those walk-through trap bars have a normal range of motion. Then you can flip it over and go and it's, it's got a handle. It's three or four inches higher. I think as a supplemental movement, that's a little less stressful. The same way that I'm using a leg extension, leg curl, reverse hyper, glute ham raise. If you want to use a trap bar as a secondary deadlift movement, I think it's mm -hmm. fine. Oh, God, yeah. it's like it's going to blow back on me. This is like heresy. Dude, when I started, when I posted my trap bar deadlifts on Instagram, every single post was like, oh my God, I can't, can't believe you're doing the trap bar deadlifts. I've lost so much deadlift. respect for you. That's right. I'm just like, goodbye. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? So uh, yeah, any of those are fine. I think the, I think almost, 
I think first off, purchasing a bar to allow you to move through a full range of motion without pain should be a very high priority. Purchasing a bar because you just love to accumulate barbells and want to do cool <laughs> shit should be a much lower priority. By the way, I have Alejandro. a client. You know who you, you are. My client. You, you know who you are. <laughs> this guy is the biggest gear whore I have ever seen. And he might work. I think for, you, me, uh, and Andrew could have like a gear whore throwdown. <laughs> this guy might work for a top ten company in the world. He might work for the most valuable company in the world. I Got won't it. say what it is. And and uh, I was telling him. You know how when you pull up the PR list on your clients on the on the app, <laughs> yes. and there's like nine exercises. All he the has variations. 80 exercises. <laughs> 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 I'm like, you have more. He's actually really hard to program for for accessory movements because he's like, Coach, can we rotate in these nine exercises uh, this, I, this week? It's exhausting. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> so actually, he's got a very clean, very neat gym. I stole a lot of stuff from him. We did a we did an organizational video that I don't think has come out yet on on YouTube That's at how cool. I organize my gym. And I have a couple clients that I looked at their videos. I was like, man, I love what they do. I love what they do. I did this several weeks ahead of time. And then I ordered some stuff based on what they have. Nice. And so certainly I'm giving him a hard time. He's got a bunch of great equipment. He's also extremely coachable, but he just loves to have all the stuff. The guy Can't really yeah. probably shouldn't quit his job at the number one company in the entire world and be a gym <laughs> owner. But if it goes bad, this guy's already set. <laughs> he could tomorrow <laughs> open a full blown commercial gym tomorrow That's with awesome. what he has. And he's and he I, the room he's he's lifting in, it's probably like it's probably like twelve by sixteen. It's not very big. Oh, it's not even that he, huge. Wow. Oh no, it's small. Wow. He has made That's he cool. has maximized space. So That's awesome. he has all this kind of stuff. Well, I can't um, see that video. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think I think that's pretty good. Uh, we have magnetic kitchen timers. How much do you use timers for either your clients or yourself when you train? Um, I'll use it for my clients more often, but yeah, I, I usually just look at my watch. Yeah. Me for too. myself. Yeah. Or else I like the stopwatch on my phone. You know what I, I use a lot and we'll, I think we're gonna do a episode coming up on wearables. I have started to utilize much more with my Apple watch rest periods based on my heart rate than the actual rest period. I know what my heart rate needs to be. When my heart rate gets down into the 120s, which is probably high for you, but like low for me, like you're the one, one, then I can go again. If yeah. I do like a heavy set of squats, a heavy set of squats, my heart rate's going to be like 155. And when it gets to down to about one, I say in the 120s, when it hits 120 or yeah. 115, somewhere in there, then I know I'm ready for the next set. That's cool. And so rather than actually timing my rest hmm. periods, and I get, I mean, you've trained with me. I move pretty yeah. fast these days. Pretty I, go, yeah. I go pretty quick. So I tend to do that. I do like magnetic kitchen timers. I use those actually all the time for Pomodoro's for working. Every, I've bought one mm. all from every member of my family to make them, to force That's them smart. to do Pomodoro's. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I use them more often for that. <laughs> I used them all the time when I was a personal trainer in person. I had the, I didn't use the magnetic kitchen timer. We had the big CrossFit wall timer, which I have in my gym oh, yeah. here at home as well. And I would just set it to buzz every two minutes. And what I would do is every every two minutes, they would have to do a set. And then when we got to the heavy work sets, like real heavy work sets, they could go, go every four. other one. So every four minutes. That's and cool. so that's it keeps them. And that's important because if somebody's paying for like an hour of time, it's easy to accidentally start telling a story, tell a story for nine minutes. And then you're like, we didn't do any work for nine minutes. <laughs> Not that I would do that. Yeah, it's, mostly uh... the, it's mostly their <laughs> yeah. problem. It wasn't a me problem. <laughs> so... Uh, okay, it. anything Excellent. else? Monolift. I think I'm going to scan through this. This looks pretty good. You need a space I heater? Space <laughs> heater? <laughs> a uh, a mini split air conditioning unit if you're in your... Yeah. Se uh, seriously, if you take this serious enough and you're in your garage and you don't live like in San Diego where it's just nice all the time or like where you live in Orange County, but, which is basically nice all the time, if you live in the Midwest where it is 105 in the summer and five degrees in the wintertime, uh, investing in some amount of climate control makes a huge yeah. difference in yeah, how nice it. it is. I remember when Scott and Charity ended up putting in an air conditioner and, and heater into their home gym. And I was like, this is so much better out here in the garage. <laughs> and so it's, and it really is. And I would say if you are a coach and you're training people out of your home, or out of your garage, I think it's your responsibility to do that. I think yeah. if you, somebody, if people are paying you multiple hundred dollars a month, 
then you should do everything you can to climate control that for them. They're paying yeah. enough money to deserve some air conditioning and heat, and you can take it as a business expense. And so you don't have, right? So it's a tax write-off for yeah. you. So those are all pretty good moves. So there you go. You got all kinds of fun stuff that you can buy for Christmas and New Year's. You can ask for, you can buy your friends and family, buy it for a friend that doesn't live and then they'll I'll give it to you. A rep gift card. <laughs> <laughs> send it, send it, yeah, yeah. So, if you wanted to send me anything, you could send me Nikki your needs fitness five thousand dollars, five thousand dollars in rep fitness Athena gift cards. In so white. she can get that sweet, <laughs> just get that sweet rack. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a good good place to start. There's all. By the way, there are so many Black Friday deals going on. Uh, yeah. I will throw a bone to our good buddy Coop at Garage Room Reviews. They do a great job at keeping track of all of the best deals. So if you're not following Garage Room Reviews, again. No relationship with him. I'm not making money off this. Coop lives in my town. He's a great dude. It's a great company. It's like the Consumer Reports of Fitness Equipment. He does a great job of, of actually also reviewing all these things. He takes no mm -hmm. money from any of these companies so outside of basic That's affiliate cool. fees. If he loves it, he posts it, and then he'll make affiliate fees. But he doesn't get paid to review ever. And so that's a great place to go. And you can kind of see what his reviews are and then see what the Black Friday deals are coming up around Thanksgiving and the holidays between now and New Year's. It's a good good place to go. Hey, this is a perfect time of year to outfit your gym just a little bit better. And we didn't even get that. into decor. I, again, I've got this great video that's Ooh. coming out about how I organize my gym. If you haven't looked at Nikki's gym on her, um, at what is it? At Nikki, what's your Instagram? Nikki in the gym with periods Nikki in the gym. each word. You've got such a great setup that's so you Thanks. with like the decals and the lights and the colors like and the, the backdrops grass on the wall <laughs> and it's not that expensive not to big. do that stuff good de it's crazy right a good decal it's like 50 bucks 70 mm -hmm. bucks depends on how big the decal yeah. is but you can really make it your own and then also we, makes have, it a great we have our own decals now i think we do have our own decals on we do website. have Barbell that's yeah. a great that's a great point i i've got that on my on my uh platform so you can get barbell logic decal they're pretty cheap i don't remember where they are but they're at the Bar barbell logic uh store at the barbell logic website you can get those and put it on your, uh, either on your platform or they'll go on your wall really nice as well. It's a nice decal. It'll suck right against the, against the wall. And, uh, those are super, super nice. So there you mm, go. There's awesome. a, there's our guide to advanced equipment for this Christmas holiday season. Hope have you love it. Fun. Yeah. I wish we had, <laughs> we should, should yeah. have done Amazon link for all of these. Get some kickbacks, but we get, we get no kickbacks. So enjoy it. Whatever you buy, tell us if you like it. If there are other things that we've missed, reach out and tell us about it. And we'll talk about them in a, a future show. Thanks for listening to yeah. the Barbell Logic Podcast. We got value out of this. We would always love a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you listen to your pod your podcast. Uh, again, we're on YouTube. Almost all of these are on YouTube as well. We certainly don't get as many people that, that watch us. I would assume they, you would think they would because they would want to see you. I understand why they don't want to see me. See, like the sun bouncing off your head. That's right. I know. It's actually really nice. Beard style. It's, look how nice <laughs> it looks outside. It's 31 yeah. out there right now. Ooh, so it looks, it looks nice. It's not nice. So you guys, happy holidays great. to all. Hope you have a great Thanksgiving and great Christmas. And we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.